Welcome to the swing sets. Climb on up. There is always a swing available. On Life on the Swing Set, the podcast, we explore ethically non-monogamous relationships, the pleasures and passions, the promise and pitfalls. We discuss all aspects of ethical non-monogamy in a fun, open, and welcoming fashion with a gleam in our eye, a bounce in our step, our hands down your pants. Ooh, (laughs) sorry, got ahead of myself. We may be biased. In fact, we most certainly are, but we don't sugarcoat and each of us speaks honestly and earnestly about our thoughts, ideas, and experiences throughout our very own Lives on the Swing Set. Thanks for swinging by. Hi there, Swing Set fans. If you're anything like us, you love to type while we talk. Let's put those keystrokes to good use. While you listen, hop on Twitter and live-ish tweet our episodes by posting using hashtag SSLiveish. That's hashtag S-S-L-I-V-E-I-S-H. Who knows, maybe you will tweet it exactly the same time one of us did, while speaking into the microphone. Yeah. Thanks. Consent shouldn't be something we have to teach. It's the simplest thing in the world, after all. Ask before you touch. But beyond that, consent is involved in so many aspects of our non-monogamous lives that learning how to give and receive enthusiastic consent is one of the most important things we need to learn early on as we open up. So that's what we're talking about tonight on Life on the Swing Set, the podcast. I'm Cooper, and with me I have... Hey everybody, it's Ginger. Hey, it's Dylan Thomas. Hey, it's Techno Geisha. Well, do I have your consent to begin? Enthusiastically. Fuck yes. yes. Fuck yes. <laughs> Excellent. So, the reason this came up was because at Desire, we actually led with uh, a discussion of consent and giving and receiving consent and how yes means yes and no means no, but maybe also means no. Yeah. And it was something that we've been hearing as we go to play parties that are facilitated by Monique. And it's something we've sort of been adapting to our own uh, play parties as we host. And I thought it was so interesting that we've talked a lot about, you know, what you want, what you don't want, and how to ask for what you want. But we've never really 100% head-on address consent here on the podcast. And I thought that was so odd that we had sort of stepped all around this very important thing, but never really directly addressed it. It's interesting, Coop, because I feel like I've addressed it indirectly in that I can remember times on the podcast where I've talked about moments where there wasn't consent Mm -hmm. and I felt uncomfortable or there was ambiguous consent and I wasn't sure what I should do or someone, you know, touched me without asking, kissed me without asking, whatever it was. I feel like we've talked about the experience of it, but not necessarily talked about what to do about that. I mean, in fact, I I do remember talking about it in the context of if you're a woman and you're not necessarily attracted to women, your orientation doesn't include being sexual with women, but somehow in the lifestyle, it becomes this implicit women like to be touched by other women. What do you do then? I remember talking a good deal about consent on that episode, but again, like you said, not directly talking about consent per se. Yeah, I think actually, now that I realize that it's come up more in things like classes we've done and sessions we've done sort of outside the podcast, but the times that I've talked about it has been, I guess, in the process of telling a story or a, you know, a past, uh, you know, play experience or something like that. Yeah, I guess we haven't done sort of the, the blanket episode of talking about consent. We do talk about blanket consent a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's so integral to actually uh, finding people to play with that we touch on it every time we talk about what's going to happen at, like, when we were in Catalyst. So, you know, episodes 174 and 175 were, you know, Bacchanali Basics is play party time and mm-hmm. Hump and Circumstance talking group sucks. And we had. Wow, way to, very... way to pull out the titles, man. I you know. Are... I mean, I know. That's so impressive. Yeah, well, they it... are, I think, still in Trello. 
Oh, g- give him the moment. <laughs> okay, sorry. Well, I mean, you, we we sometimes we talk about stuff we've done in the past, but this is a, an example where we've actually had like twenty minute robust discussions uh, mm-hmm. about what consent is and why you need it. But like to not flesh out what what the hell it means it, it is is a bit of an omission. So yeah, we kind of you know by not having a consent episode, uh, we might have done ourselves a disservice. And so I'm glad that we're touching on it now, especially because it's really topical right now because there's all this uh it's it's all it's hot and wrapped up in politics right now because we've had some very high profile stuff going on in california we've had some we've had a really intense debate about uh rape and consent and affirmative consent on college campuses right now and we've had you know the conservative talking heads talking about the death of sex on tv just because you know you have to uh you know actually get affirmative consent and what does affirmative consent mean are people that don't explicitly get yeses for everything that they do going to be charged with rape at some point this is all happening right now and so and the discussion of what uh whether consent can even be given when there are intoxicants involved Mm -hmm. right and so let's start out for a second by talking about what the hell affirmative consent is how we define that and what's the difference between that and other forms of consent and why we would like accept one over another or not accept one. <laughs> that's, that's a whole lot of stuff to start <laughs> with. Uh, I, th- I think it's, it's very important to uh, mention that thing I briefly mentioned at the top of the show, which uh, is that maybe is not consent. And this is really, uh, we, we start with play party rules and we start with that because play party rules can be very easily pushed back into IRL. You know, because if you if you look at it as a play party is the most heightened type of environment you're liable to be in uh, sexually, a, a bar it would also qualify. But you're going to be asked if I can fuck you. It's not even, you're going to be asked if I can touch you. I always like to start with the, can I touch you? But you're going to be directly asked at a play party, can I fuck you? And you're going to need to be able to say yes, because that's someone you want to fuck or no, because that's someone you don't want to fuck. And if you're sort of on the fence, we always encourage people to say no instead of maybe. Because no can always be changed to a yes in the future. Sure. I I do want to say, though, Coop, th- that I agree with you that your experience as you're recounting it with being at a play party and having someone specifically say, I would really like to fuck you. Would you like that? Is that something you would like to do together? That That's a pretty specific kind of play party with people who are well-versed in consent. And I just want to back up to the idea of your original question of what is affirmative consent. And, you know, oftentimes in my early, you know, swing party experiences that asking for affirmative consent didn't sound like that at all. In fact, it sounded like Oh, are you into me? Or mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think you're sexy. What do you think? <laughs> so, so I don't want to jump immediately to this idea that when people are consenting or asking for consent, that they are outlining exactly what they want to do, that there's a lot of ambiguity that can be built into the asking, especially if you're not used to asking for consent in a very explicit way. And I just use this example, the rope master and I were talking about this and that idea of ambiguous consent and how the longer you're in the ethical non-monogamous world, you're more comfortable with saying, you know, I'd really like to touch your breast. I'd really like to, you know, whatever that is right in the moment, asking those things. Yet there are times, and I can recount very specific times where the consent was given. And and I speak for myself that I gave consent for something that I wasn't even sure what was going to happen. And I was very comfortable in the moment of saying, 
no, I don't want to do that, whatever that was, but I'm really into this. So, you know, no, I don't want to ha- I don't want to fuck. I don't want to have your penis in me, but I'm really into oral or I'd really love to make out or whatever it is. So I was the one who was kind of putting that explicit clear parameter around the consent, but only after I had given consent in the first place for the ambiguous piece. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, I learned over time and I think we all do learn over time, but I don't want to jump over that, that long process of what am I consenting? How do I consent? How do I ask for consent? How, how do I even say these words? that feel a little uncomfortable when we're not quite in the moment. So I, I can reflect on those times and there's a lot to learn in those moments. Yeah. I think there's also, um, a a lot, not just giving consent, but learning how to say no and, and to refuse. Yeah. Uh, Um, and I've noticed this a lot uh, because, you know, we've done, we did the two, um, sessions, the podcast and the session, and then we just did tool shed, where that seemed to be something that people were really reaching out for to the point where they were like, can you give us examples of how to say no? And it's, it was sort of mind blowing to have people um, need sort of hints and tips on how to actually say no to someone. I mean, we were supposed to be like, how do I say no in a polite way? Or how do I say no in a way that really tells somebody exactly why I'm saying no, and doesn't, you know, uh, you know, make them feel bad about themselves or, um, but it's really one of the hardest things, uh, along with uh, knowing when you want to give enthusiastic consent. It's also being able to confidently um, say no. And that can be very hard to do. I, I think one of the most powerful reasons for affirmative consent or enthusiastic consent existing is because it uh, there's always a certain amount of guesswork when you're interacting with somebody brand new. You know, sometimes there's a uh, a language barrier. And I, I don't mean, I don't necessarily mean, you know, English to English. I mean, sometimes words mean different things to different people. And so we just use language differently based on our life experiences and where we grew up and things like that. And so during a normal uh, negotiation uh, or flirtation or whatever's happening, uh, there are there are a bunch of stages where you kind of you're kind of working your way up to something else. And so it's like, all right, you walk up to somebody, kind of say hi, start chatting, talking. And then there's clearly a time when that person is both enjoying your company and welcoming it. And so the welcoming of that company is them giving consent. It, you, you now have consent to spend your time with that person, and they want to spend the time with you. And then if that flirtation goes really well, you know, you find yourself able to be in their personal space, or you invite that person to be in your personal space. And so all of a sudden, there's consent to be in each other's personal space. And then all of a sudden... Uh, either by asking, you know, can I touch you or a light brush on the arm and seeing how things go or whatever it is, all of a sudden you've given each other consent to touch each other. And then you keep moving that along the line and then you you give consent or get consent to get together, be more intimate, get naked. Can I be inside you? Can we do the raw sexual things that we want to do? Can we be open and honest about what we want? And so affirmative and enthusiastic consent doesn't necessarily have to be Yes, I want to do this with you. But it does mean that it's clear that that person wants to do these things with you or that you are saying, yes, I want to do these things with you. And and without that, there can be some uh, ambiguity. There can be some blurred lines. And more, more importantly, it can be confusing. And then all of a sudden, uh, somebody that you've been flirting with all night may not have been open to uh, being with you in the way that you want. When you can just by by being uh by offering what you're interested in in addition to all the normal flirting and interaction you do you can kind of shortcut that stuff and not waste their time not waste your time and be cool about everything and then all of a sudden everybody's on the same page and you never need to worry about ambiguity about consent well i always think about it from the from the context uh, in my learning experiences at the beginning 
I can see the direct connection with how explicit I have become with saying what I want right up front. So I hear you, Dylan, that there is still a lot of, you know, sexy mojo and, and smooth enjoyment of, of the, the vibe and the chemistry. But when it hits that point where I know what I want and I feel like, you know, it's that tipping point into sexy times to then just say out loud all of the things that I've been thinking that I would enjoy with this person or these people. And I've turned, in my mind, I've turned consent into into my own personal permission for not just saying yes, but for asking for what I want. So I've actually feel like I've taken it kind of a step further into my consent is actually the, the things that I want to do with you. Ah, okay. Does that, does that make sense? So it's not just like, yes, I'm into you, but it's yes, I'm wanting to have you use a strap on with me and put your mouth on my breasts and my sexy flower and, you know, do the whole like sexy list. And this is how I want you to do it. I would love for you to use this and, you know, gather it, it turns into the big, (laughs) the big picture of consent for me where I'm like, (laughs) this is it. And, and, and I don't want it ever to turn into an agenda or to turn into a, um, you know, a, a list, a, a, yeah, yeah, a list of a, demands. A, exactly. <laughs> this is what you must do to me in order for these me to These are consent. my demands. These are my demands. It's a Trello <laughs> document. So then when you check it off, there it exactly. says yes. Ginger Bentham has completed pegging. Exactly. And, and I know exactly how, how far we are percentage wise into our sexual experience. Which That's is convenient. To me. It yes. is. Yeah. It is. So it's almost that, but not. it's it's really it seems like it's about um uh being so confident in knowing what you want that the uh the process of consent uh becomes easier the process of enthusiastic consent becomes easier and i think um there's a lot of people who are starting out when you don't really know exactly what you want or exactly um, what situation you're um, you're open for or where exactly you want this to go, consent can be tricky, especially if you have someone who's not checking in with you um, during that process and is just sort of like, oh, she's not saying anything, so I'm just going to keep going and, and, and is not paying attention to, um, you know, verbal cues or physical cues or, you know, things like that. So... It's a good, like, I guess, sort of, you know, wonderful example for people that are beginning of finding out, um, what it is that you want and learning how to vocalize that, um, can really help when you want to give that enthusiastic consent. Cause if it's, if it's something you don't really, you're not really sure about, uh, you can come off as sort of, sort of a wishy washy consent. Uh, and that mm-hmm. that can be troublesome. Well, not only can it be troublesome, but uh, anything for me, anything that appears to not be that enthusiastic, fuck yeah, mm-hmm. I consider a no. Yes, as because, you as you should, <laughs> because that's uh, you know, if if there's hesitance in any way, and I, it doesn't matter to me why the hesitance is there. I mean. Let me rephrase that. It does matter to me why the hesitance is there, (laughs) but I treat it the same regardless of what the hesitance is. Because if you're not 100% on board with this, then we can either negotiate it down to something you are 100% Mm. on board with, or I'll hope you find what you're looking for (laughs) and I'll move on and find someone who is 100% on board with doing something. So I'm curious in, in the context of that coop and, and I open this to Miko and Dylan too. What has it felt like when you guys have been in a position of that ambiguous consent? It kind of feels like an opportunity to me to tell you the truth. Okay. For kind of a different type of interaction. 
th- there's a big difference between hesitance and somebody just being shy or introverted and not quite expressing interest. And so there there's a definite like somebody's not quite expressing interest line where it's like okay, we're, but we're still talking. So I can be a little more open about uh what I find attractive in them or what our common interests are or about suggesting things that they may want to do because they're 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 still consenting to having a real conversation. Uh, and consenting to spend their time with me. And so there's there's some mutual interest there. But I can still ask for whether they're interested in something or ask for what I might want from them uh, in in a respectful way where they can ease, very easily say, you know, no or no thanks. And then at that point, things change. So I kind of like the guessing game in some ways. Uh, but hesitance is a very strong, strong word. And so I kind of... Uh, shift to Cooper's opinion where if somebody's like hesitant where they're they're saying with their eyes or saying there's also a difference eh, between hesitance no. and coy yes exactly you know and if if someone's being coy and playfully hesitant that's a different story but the moment i i see any actual uh hesitance there it's it's off and it's well Come back to me if you decide that this is something you'd like to do, because then that puts the onus on the other person to come back and say, I would like to do this. Hey, I'm a big fan of giving everybody potential outs to yes. interactions with me. And it's not because I think they might not want to be there, but because it makes it easy and it makes it understood that, hey, I'm OK with whatever you want or don't want. And you'd never have to worry about that. So you feel free to say no or maybe not or whatever you want to say at any point and it's cool and so i i always make it a point to give people an out uh, and that way when you're not afraid to say no it increases the value of your yes because if if i've heard you say no if i know you've said no if you've said no to me then when you say yes to me i know that oh you must really absolutely want to do this because otherwise you wouldn't. You'd say no. Which has lots of value. So we're going to take a quick break. And we'll be right back with Life on the Swings at the Podcast. When it comes to online dating, we here at The Swing Set believe that Cassidy is the best one out there. It looks great, it's intuitive and easy to use, and it's simply full of potential sexy friends. Still the fastest growing online swinger dating site in the world, Cassidy has been our go-to site for the last three years. If you sign up using our link at lifeontheswingset.com slash K-A-S-I-D-I-E, you'll get some free time to explore the site. And you can decide for yourself if Cassidy is the site for you. Hope to see you there at Cassidy.com. Hey everybody, it's Ginger. And this is the professor. We're back from the Swing Set Desire trip. And with all of Ginger's mm, enthusiasm, her sexy voice is now as raw as her. Prof, oh. we're here to talk about our upcoming oh, yeah. Swing Set Desire trips. That's right. In November, the crew will be back from the 7th through the 14th. And all of you swing setters know Ginger is insatiable, so we will also invite you to join us in April from the 18th to the 23rd. You do know just what to do to please me. The April visit will be enough to get a taste of desire before next November. How about a taste of Ginger? <laughs> Maybe. We will miss Cooper, Dylan, Miko, and their lovelies on this trip. But we can still tweet and tease the hell out of them, right? Well, you're the state of masochist. And my hands on the flogger. Oops. Sorry. Got ahead of myself. You are awful. <laughs> Go to lifeontheswingset.com slash desire to get connected with Shar Travel for more information on both trips. And in the meantime, use hashtag SSDesire on Twitter to tell us about all the fun, sexy times you had or will have. We're going to have. Going we'll to see have. you there. Bye. Welcome back to Life on the Swings at the Podcast. Tonight we are talking about consent and the incredible value of it. In the beginning, we brought up the uh, the rather horrendous 
issues regarding consent and rape on college campuses and how this national dialogue that's being had at times just seems rather bizarre because let's not identify a political party, <laughs> but let's say some people don't seem to understand how consent works when they're talking about how rape shows up on, especially on college campuses. Well, you know, it's coupled with the victim blaming and things like that. And, um, it, a lot of it stems, I think from just, it goes back to poor sex education. Um, the, the way that we're, um, you know, raising boys, um, it's it's still amazing to me that we're clinging on to so many um, sort of what should be at this point outdated gender ideas um, that, you know, there are a lot of people who never hear and a lot of, uh, you know, boys as a kid never hear about consent when they're younger. You know, that we're still dealing with a society that's doing boys will be boys and uh, that, you know, and, and allowing uh, it, it's sort of bizarre because having young children that are in school, um, they're doing things and they're telling them not to touch each other, but they're not being very specific as to how that's really supposed to be applied in real life. Because really all it seems to create are uh, young adults that are afraid to be affectionate with each other, but don't seem to have a problem with touching somebody sexually without asking for consent. So where are we going wrong uh, with the kids as we educate them up into the college years where they don't seem to understand that there's a difference between, um, you know, well, you know, maybe I can't touch somebody out on the playground while I'm playing, but I can, but, but you know, I also get to go home and have my mom tell me that I have to take a hug from a family member. And, and and this is something that I am really working hard with my kids because I come from a family that touches un non-consensually in that manner all the time. It's a very huggy, kissy family. And one of my kids is not into that. And it, it's it's just not his thing. And And I actually had a friend of the family, like, practically chase him around to get a hug. And I had to protect him and basically explain to her that it's, he doesn't enjoy that. And I respect that, that I don't think it makes him like you any less or appreciate, or appreciate any, you any less. Um, if he asks that we not hug or give a kiss, it's okay. And, you know, having this other person being older and having grown up in this, you have to hug your grandma or you have to hug that weird aunt or get a kiss from some family member you've never met because of that obligation. This was unheard of to her, but she relented. And I do that with my kids. I, you know, the one likes to hug all the time. The other doesn't want it. I'm constantly telling them if the other person says no, you have to respect that. But unfortunately, we have a generation that's not growing up with that. So we're not talking about sex with kids and how that should happen responsibly. We're also not telling them that it's okay to say no. Then we let them loose in college. Well, and, and I want to just go with that Miko in, you know, taking it a step further that one of the things I always find interesting about being a woman in the world is that, you know, my personal sexual coming of age, I think it speaks to a lot of women. And we just talked about some of this when we had Lady Cheeky on and, um, we talked about the fact that women's pleasure isn't theirs. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it belongs to someone else. You put on a white dress, you marry them, then you hand it over to them and they know how it works. And so it's not yours to control. And one of the things in that paradigm of women's pleasure, not being their own women's sexuality, not being their own is you don't learn how to say yes. 
Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's, it's a bit of the flip side of what you just shared of, you know, not, not being able to say no at a particular age, but then going to a place where you're so moved by your shame, you're so moved by wanting certain things, but knowing that it's just not okay because good, good girls don't as, you know, Gina Ogden says, yeah, I'm, it, it's, it, you go to that place of, okay, so if good girls don't, if this isn't for me, then, then these desires I have, this sexual urge that I have, I can't say yes. So if I go to this place of just repressing my yes, even if I want to say yes, uh, you know, it's, it's about, I need to learn the language to say yes. I need to own my sexual desires and, and be able to, again, affirmatively consent or ask for what I want. And I think that there is an element of that, that mixed up with all of the things you just shared and, and the confused messages, uh, you know, among the genders specifically in, in the United States around who gets to have what sexual pleasure and at what point that it's, it's really a recipe for disaster to hit that, that early adulthood phase where you have complete agency and you just don't have the language or the empowerment or the knowledge. I mean, the sheer knowledge around sexual health. Um, it's, it's, it's not to be, it can't be overstated how much we need to work to remedy that. The idea that something is owed to you. Well, yeah. Is, you know, that, that's a, a lot of, uh, kids don't really understand that either. Uh, and, and it seems to happen too with, you know, cat calling and things like that and, um, not wanting to accept a no because, well, I've taken you out and I've done this and, you know, I'm at this age where I'm supposed to be getting sex, uh, but I'm not getting it. And the frustration and, and um, n- not having a healthy discussion about, I guess, sex leading up to that. Um, how do you express that? And it often just uh, turns into something really ugly. Uh, well, that, that feeds into the whole uh, friend zone thing and men's rights movement and Gamergate movements that are just completely based on uh men specifically having agency over women i mean it, they they all talk like whenever we give back the choice and the uh, choice to women and freedom to for women to make their own decisions that you're taking something away from men this mixed messaging that we have on body, body ownership and touch that you were talking about earlier first of all miko by the way uh you're fucking awesome for modeling how to stand up for somebody when they are saying no and they're not getting that no across in a way that that person that's, you know, invading their space is going to understand. So kudos to that, not just because you're teaching your child, but because that's what needs to happen uh, whenever something like that happens, whether it's with mm-hmm. a kid or whether it's an adult. But it, it, uh, and, and I will, Cooper, go ahead out on a limb and say this is largely a conservative pundit and a very conservative religious idea. That when you take away men's ability to dictate how women experience pleasure, you're taking something fundamentally away from a man. He's not a man anymore uh, because all of a sudden the woman can make decisions for herself. And the thing is, this shit isn't scary. Uh, once you're with a woman that actually wants to be with you and can make choices about her own sexuality, uh, that that empowers everybody in in ways that makes interactions better, communication better, sex better. This doesn't make you less of a man uh, just because you can't dictate what somebody else can or can't do with their body. If anything, you're going to have more opportunities for what you really want. I mean, we all like sex. I challenge any conservative pundit and or religious uh, conservative person to tell me that they don't enjoy sex, whether they believe it's just for procreation or whatever other purposes out there. I mean, sex is a pleasurable thing. So uh, <laughs> if, if we all want to have good sex... Let's make it possible for people to have good sex. And we can have discussions on the specifics of the other big political footballs out there anytime. And I will have that debate on their territory, no problem. But just 
giving people the power to say yes and to say no is it's a powerful thing but it doesn't take away from anybody else and it confuses the shit out of me when people say well nobody's ever going to have sex again because you have to give affirmative consent or you well, know, they, they go into this anymore. this thing where it's like oh so i guess i have to ask if i can look at someone now i guess i have to ask if it's it's this weird grandstanding yeah yeah it's a bullshit straw man argument when you know growing up uh the the culture around men is it treats sex with women as this sort of take the hill mentality <laughs> you know like okay yeah. so today i got to touch her tits over her sweater tomorrow i'm gonna try to go under and it's 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 this run right up to the line get your hands pushed away okay now tomorrow i can run a little bit further up to the line get my hands pushed away and then the next day i can run a little bit further. and this is something we see this is something that's so ingrained as this is how this is how sex begins mm -hmm. uh, eventually you'll you'll run at the goal so many times you'll get through sure <laughs> and i think coop you're to your point i i feel like i i can't say this enough times that there's so much about women owning their own pleasure in this that is important because there, there can be, and, and, you know, this is like treading a very dangerous line here to say these things, but there is this, there is this, or can be this experience of women having to do that in order to preserve their, their reputation, so to speak. You know, I can't say, you know what? I'm just going to take my fucking shirt off because I want you to just like go to town. You have to earn like, it. <laughs> you have to earn it. No, and, and and not no. And you have to earn it and or I have to look like this is sort of not okay with me mm -hmm. because if I want to just like throw all my clothes off and, you know, put the condom on you myself that somehow it's going to come back and bite me because it's not okay as a woman that I say that I use my enthusiastic consent, that, that, that shame, that, that cultural message is so just, just, just there. It just, it, it's, you know, it's, imbues every cell that you have to work very hard to own your own power to say, I know what I want. I know what my sexual health looks like, all of that stuff. And I'm going to, I'm going to say yes. You know, I'm going to own my yes. And I think that, you know, getting back to the sheer, basics of consent, you know, owning that yes is, is a big step. Mm -hmm. mm. So we're going to take a break and we'll be right back with Life on the Swings at the podcast. We at the Swing Set believe that being risk aware and practicing safer sex makes our lifestyle exponentially better. With that in mind, we're partnering with Lucky Bloke, global condom experts, and the best online source for condoms and lube to say no to mediocre condoms and bring the most pleasurable, safer sex directly to our listeners. Go to swingsetcondoms.com to see a specially curated selection of condoms, lubes, and assortments to reintroduce variety and excitement into the protection portion of your playtime. You should especially take note of the deluxe sampler put together by us at the Swing Set for your party and date night kit. Making your condom purchase here supports both us at the Swing Set and the wonderful purveyors of safer sex, Lucky Bloke. Swingsetcondoms.com Hello friends, Cooper here to announce the big news that my first book is being released on January 6th on Kindle. Head over to Amazon to pre-order My Life on the Swing Set and read what Jackie Strano calls Fear and Loathing Meets On the Road. Nina Hartley calls Essential Reading and Betty Dotson says is full of humor, drama, and her favorite, sexy parts. Learn more at my.lifeontheswingset.com. 
Welcome back to Life on the Swings at the podcast. So what happens, you know, we've said you can change your mind at any time and that the the importance of recognizing that you can change your mind at any time. So what happens when you give a yes or you hear a yes and then at some point it turns into a let's say no thank you for any reason? Well, I've been actually in the act, so to speak, I mean, not even so to speak, like actually in the act of something and have had that, okay, this isn't working anymore, whether it's the position or the, like whatever, it's usually a very physiological, oh my gosh, I have a cramp in my quad. I cannot function right now. <laughs> so the consent necessarily, it, it, it didn't change because of the person or because of the act or anything. It just changed. There can be a whole host of reasons. Exactly. Like the, the, that just wasn't working at the time. And it's always been beautifully received where I just say what I need. And I have amazing lovers who just make happen what I need to have happen. So mm -hmm. I found that just voicing my change of attitude or mindset or interest in what was happening immediately facilitated the change that I needed. You know, I've had at parties lately, um, I, because I do my whole demonstrating toys thing, I've had a number of requests early on in a party. Oh, can we try that? Can we do that? Can we do that? And I say yes, because I consent to that. I am a yes for that. But then as the party goes on, maybe I've done too much already and my arm hurts or I'm not really interested in doing anything more tonight. And I'm not saying uh, suddenly – no, I'm not interested in you. I'm saying, no, I, I, I don't think I'm up for it again tonight. Can I have a rain check on that? It could also be um, for someone who uh, is still learning what, what they want and what they like and what could go into something and be like, oh, yeah, oh, wow, I really, oh, I, I've always wanted to do that. And, uh, and then you get in the middle of it and you're like, um, hey, you know, now that I'm actually doing this. I'm not so sure. Um, and to be, um, honest with the people that you're with that, okay, this seemed like a great idea mm -hmm. in theory or an hour ago or, um, you know, a, a, some idea that I had, um, what this was going to be like, but it's suddenly not working for me right now. Um, to never be afraid to tell people that, okay, this isn't really working for me the way I thought and be very honest about that mm -hmm. and, and, and own up to it. It's like, you know what? I always thought that this would, you know, I, I think that this would be something I'd be into, but at this stage, I'm not feeling it. Um, and it's hard when you're learning, when you're starting and you haven't been doing this for very long, when you're exploring things that you've never explored before or adding additional people, uh, sometimes you don't know you like something until you're in the middle of doing something. And so you, you don't know, know you, you don't, don't like, like yeah. something until you're actually doing it. It's sort of like we can all love the idea of having a banana split that it, if we've never had it <laughs> and halfway through it, you could be like, this is just not for me. I don't so, like wait. this. I had a moment there thinking that was some sort of euphemism. Yeah, I, like I was, I was trying brain, to figure like, out what, what the what banana is split is. I've never done that. I don't even See, know I use is. a food metaphor and like everyone it. on the swing set thinks, wow, she knows a sex position I've never tried before. Well, I mean, it's possible. <laughs> well, it was banana split. So, yeah. you know, split. there's so much about that that's really there's, sexy. There's a lot in there. There's a lot there. <laughs> and you can use that, that change uh, to negotiate down to something else. Mm -hmm, most definitely. I mean, it may be a, I need to extricate myself from this situation, from this scene, from this person, from this party. Or it can be a, okay, butt stuff is not working for me right now. <laughs> exactly. Could we try this? Or could we just cuddle for a few minutes? And that's a great transitional thing that you can do. And you can also do that when you get the no thank you, like the butt stuff is not working for me right now. Well, how would you feel about this? Mm -hmm. And then I I always take it to the if uh, if that gets a no, 
I'm going to go ahead and assume the situation is not going to present itself tonight. So therefore, I will offer the out. It's like, would you rather uh, just call it a night here? Yeah. Because giving and- that out to my play partner is is a great way to show that you know I acknowledge that you have every right to change your mind at any time and leave the situation at any time, and you don't even need to explain yourself to me. And it's great for people to hear that because I think um, this is something that's come up with uh, in questions about when can I, when is a good time to say no, or when is it? Yeah, and almost it's like any time. As soon as you feel the no, say the no. As soon as you feel the no, say the no, and don't hesitate because you're worried about being the buzzkill, Mm -hmm. or you're worried about ruining the other person's time. Because really, if you're with a a good partner. They're going to understand and they're going to do just like what Coop suggests. Can, can we, maybe we should try, or maybe this is the end of the evening, or maybe we just cuddle a little bit. You know, don't automatically assume that you're going to disappoint the other person. Um, it's better to just own your no and work on it from there. And if that person doesn't respect you for speaking up for yourself, then it's a good thing you ended that time together with that person anyway. Because really consent is also about the person letting you have that moment to say no and either renegotiate or just stop completely if that's what you need at that moment. People, it, it, when people ask, you know, when the right time is to say no and when you say, you know, any time, it, it's, it's important because you, a no does not always have to mean the end of the moment or the end of sexy times. Uh, I, I've, I've said it before saying no to some specific activity is not them saying no to you or no to something else. I mean, you can, like Cooper said, you can negotiate down, you can move on to other things. And at the Mm -hmm. bottom, at the end of the day, that person has said a lot of yes to you already. And that's cool. So, (laughs) you know, no is not an insult. No is not catastrophic. No is not the end to, uh, you know, a play party. No is just, I'm good and everything's okay. I have consent to skip business for the evening. And you can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the swing set. You can follow us on Twitter at swing set life at ginger and the prof at techno geisha at Dylan, the Thomas. Okay. You know, wow. this reminds me of something <laughs> Dylan, uh, specifically to you. Uh-oh. So in, I, I've been editing my book and this thing happens a lot in my writing where miscellaneous reader will interrupt me and give me shit. <laughs> and I realized as I was writing my uh, acknowledgments, it's not miscellaneous reader. It's you. <laughs> so when listeners out there read my book, anytime there's a quote that's not, uh, that's not really attributed to anyone, it's Dylan. <laughs> Read it in Dylan's voice. Read it in Dylan's <laughs> voice. And your your enjoyment of the book will be that much higher. Awesome. Yeah, you should really put that in the beginning. Oh, no, they'll have to read it again. I like it. Okay. For <laughs> yes, I put it at the end yes. so they do have to go back and reflect. <laughs> it's like it's like The Sixth Sense. It was Dylan all along. Oh, you know, we could release a companion app. With like five of my best, you know, oh, snarky <laughs> sayings, and then just say like press four. You know? Well, Dylan, what about no, this? this ne- when I do the audio book, I was going to say this needs to be oh, an audio book because I'm going to do the audio book. That's what you I was should just record about to say. the interjections. I would be happy to, Cooper. I would be, I would be <laughs> delighted to do that. That, that, that would be fantastic. <laughs> oh, okay, so speaking of interjections, we were in the middle of the outro when I segued. <laughs> <laughs> you can support us by buying shirts, condoms, and our swingset.fm app, or leave us a tip at lifeontheswingset.com slash support. Check out this podcast, daily blogs, articles, and toy reviews on our website at lifeontheswingset.com and on our site's Twitter feed at On The Swing Set. And you can find our other great podcasts like Carnocopia, Eat The Rootcast, and the resurgent The Kinky Geeks at swingset.fm. Thanks for swinging by. Have a sexy business? Love the swing set? Let's put these two great things together. The Swing Set Network has advertising and sponsorship packages available for our websites and podcasts. 
Email advertising at lifeontheswingset.com for more information. Thanks. You were just a <laughs> desire. You were not business free. That's true. Yeah, well, that's true. I have a little that's bit of true. business if we're talking about design. But yes, that's fine. Like, I totally have 8 million things. I'm keeping notes on my business, and I'm keeping notes on my business. <laughs> notes all over your business. I have notes. I have <laughs> sticky notes all over my business. All over your business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll save them for the us heavy episodes. <laughs> You're listening to a Swing Set podcast at swingset.fm. 